Hi and welcome to the first episode of In the Studio with the Thrill Seekers. I'm Steve Hellstrip and this is my studio. The idea behind this series is to take a look at what goes on in the studio here on a day-to-day -day basis and to kind of look at how I make that Thrill Seekers sound whether it's uh, one of my own tracks or whether it's a remix for somebody else. Um, getting slightly more technical later, I'll also be taking a look at some of the equipment, um, whether it's hardware, the hardware synths here, or the plugins that I use inside the computer. And what I'd also like to do is kind of do some tutorials for those that are producers yourselves at home and make some of the sounds that I use, such as you know the drums and the effects, available to you via my website so you can actually try out some of these things for yourself. Um, so let's not waste any more time, let's, uh, let's get to it. Okay, so this is where I spend most of my time in the studio, um, sat in front of Cubase, which is... Um, the software which allows me to uh, program and produce and arrange all the different elements that go into making a track. As you can see, I have three monitors here, which is really useful because within Cubase itself are many other programs called plugins, um, which actually make the sounds. So whether it's a synthesizer or some kind of sound shaping tool, they all come up on the screens and um, take up a lot of space. So having three screens is a real lifesaver. Uh, just beneath my screens here, I have a, like a normal keyboard and also a MIDI keyboard, which I use for playing in the parts. And the keyboard also has quite a few knobs and controls, which allow me to change the sounds if I wish. Uh, moving around slightly, we have uh, a control surface, which is just like a traditional tape player, to be honest. It allows me to rewind and record and also change levels within inside Cubase itself. Um, moving further around to the right, we have um, a bank of synthesizers, which uh, I need to get my hands on quite easily, so they're quite close to hand. Um, running down, we have a, a virus TI at the top there, which makes those kind of hard, kind of big club sounds that we're all familiar with. And beneath that, we have a few more synthesizers and effects, uh, which we'll probably take a, a listen to later on in the series. Moving around again, we have the mixing console where all the sounds kind of all come together and funnily enough is where they are mixed together. Just beneath there we have another keyboard. This is probably one of my favourite synths that I own. It's called an Orderly 2. And it kind of creates, um, well for example, uh, Hydra Affinity. It's the lead sound from there. And also um, the main sound from Sublime, which was a track I made with Ferry Corsten, also came from this synth. So definitely one of my favourite pieces of kit here. As we move around again, uh, further away from where I actually sit is the equipment that I don't really need to get my hands on that much, to be honest. So we have more effects and actually equipment that I haven't actually switched on for years and years because uh, the computers have really taken over the job of some of these pieces of kit. OK, so let's take uh, a listen to um, the Nord lead to find out what these things actually sound like. Um, OK, so here we go. I'll just go through some of the sounds and you can kind of get a feel for what they do. Yeah, great big kind of warm sounds, which are kind of what I kind of go to all the time in my productions. Um, this is kind of similar to the Affinity sound, uh, which um, also came from this keyboard. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, a, I'm surprised I can still play that after all these years. Look. Um, oh yeah, this is the, um, the Sublime sound which I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. So those are the kind of sounds that the Nord League makes. Um, okay, let's take a look at something else. Let's go over and have a look at the Yamaha CX. Okay, so let's check out the Yamaha CS6X, which uh, I named incorrectly earlier. Um, so as well as being the, uh, the main keyboard for playing the parts into Cubase, um, it's also a pretty cool synth in itself. Um, so I'll just kind of go through some of the sounds that we have here. 
Um, let's have a look. I love this little sound. I've used this on a few tracks actually, just little, it's called a cyber whip. You can probably tell why. Um, let's flick through some of these. Um, so there are many kind of great pads on it here as well, the kind of warm, kind of lovely washy sounds that um, kind of make trance what it is. Um, this is one of them called Andromeda. soundscapes and things okay so that's um, kind of what this synth does um, an interesting synth over here is the the virus ti which although a physical hardware synth um, also um, has a software control interface in Cubase itself which is um, great for when it comes to saving um, arrangements because all the settings are saved within Cubase um, so rather than look at the the hardware synth Let's um, take a look at the uh, software GUI. Um, okay, let's go for that. Okay, so we're uh, inside Cubase now, and this is the uh, the control interface for the virus TI. Along the top here, we have the various pages which give you access to the many parameters for, for changing the sounds. Um, but I don't want to bore you with that too much because um, it is actually quite boring. So let's get to the sounds themselves. I mean, there are literally many tens of thousands of patches for this synth but down the bottom here we have a few of my favorites um so let's go through a few for a few of them for you so uh as well as being able to do great pads you can also do things like let's have a look let's find a nasty sound in here um, this is pretty cool let's give this one a go so that's pretty cool and dirty. Uh, what else have we got in here that's quite interesting to show you? This is quite a cool sound. Um, okay, so that's the virus TI. Just moving on. Um, through some of my tracks in Cubase here. For drums, there is a, a program called Battery, which is um, this thing here, which has many pads, which if we click on these pads, we can hear the drum sounds. I can also play these directly from the keyboard down here. So if we kind of go along the keyboard here, we can uh, hear these sounds. And in Cubase itself, what we can do is actually record the individual sounds onto separate tracks. So I've kind of just created a really simple uh, drum pattern here to show you. Um, let me just change that. So um, here's like a simple kick drum. And then we have uh, a few more parts in here, which just really building up a really kind of simple um, drum loop. Um, on top of that, then we can obviously play um, whatever we like on many more tracks. So um, that's kind of a, a brief look at um, some of the basic features that we use in Cubase. Okay, so I hope that's given you some kind of insight to um, some of the uh, synths and sounds that I use here. Um, in the next episode, what I'm gonna do is um, actually take a look at uh, a remix that I've finished recently um, for Chicane, which is the Poppy Hollow remix. And what I'm gonna do is take you um, through the arrangement track by track so you can see and hear how the kind of track came together. Um, so that's gonna be next, probably in about two weeks time. Um, so I hope that's been interesting for you. Uh, I'd just like to say thanks very much to Jay, who's been helping out with the camera work, who uh, also happens to be a producer himself. Um, from Arcane Science, so thank you very much. So, um, okay, well, we'll see you in the next episode. Okay, bye.